For this tutorial, I'm using Bernat Maker Home Deck. It's a really cool nylon and cotton blend yarn that makes it really stretchy. It is a size 5 bulky weight yarn, and I am using the color clay. If you would like to find some of this yarn, you can find it at yarnspirations.com. This cozy is worked from the bottom up, and then afterwards you add the bottom rounds. The tags are from Angie and Britt, and I will link them in the description box below. I also got these cups from the Dollar General. They are two for one dollar. For the body of the cozy, you will need a six millimeter hook. And for the bottom of the cozy, we switched down to a four millimeter hook. And for the very last round, we use a 3.75 millimeter hook. You're also going to need a stitch marker. To begin, chain 38. Once you have chained 38, be very careful to not twist your chain and join to the very first stitch with a slip stitch. I am working in the back loop only of this round. So when you make your slip stitch, make it in the back loop only of that very first chain stitch. Now we are going to chain one. And in that very same stitch that we joined in, we're going to make one single crochet, a chain one, and another single crochet. That's all in the same stitch. Now we're going to skip two stitches. And in the very next stitch, we are going to work another single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the back loop only. So that's all in the same stitch. We're going to skip two stitches, and in the next stitch, we are going to work in the back loop only a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. You should see the pattern forming here. You're just going to repeat that all the way around. You're going to skip two stitches, and then in the next stitch, you're going to make a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. You're just going to do that all the way around. So here I am at the end. I'm skipping the last stitch and I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch in the very first single crochet I made to finish up that round. Now we're going to be working through both loops. So chain one and in that same stitch you joined, we're going to do the single crochet, chain one, single crochet. We're going to skip two stitches, which is technically the chain stitch and the second single crochet. So we're skipping the chain and the single, and in the very next stitch, we're going to make a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Skip the next two stitches, make a single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next stitch. Skip two, single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next stitch. You're just going to repeat this stitch pattern all the way around, and I will meet you at the end. So here we are at the end. We're skipping the last two stitches, and we are not going to slip stitch to join. We're just going to continue on in the stitch pattern. So that's a single crochet, chain one, single crochet in that very first stitch. And go ahead and mark the first single crochet you made of this round. So I'm going to put my stitch marker in that first single crochet. We are going to be working in the continuous round from here on out. So we're going to skip the next two stitches and make a single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next stitch. Skip two, make the single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next stitch. And you see the stitch pattern. You're just going to continue doing this. 
you are going to continue making rounds until you've done six total rounds. So we just started the third round. You need to do three more after this one for a total of six rounds. And I'll meet you back here. So here I'm showing you that I have done six rounds. And I'm near the end. I haven't joined or anything. And instead of skipping the last two stitches and joining in the marked stitch, we're going to skip one stitch and slip stitch in the last stitch of the round. Now, our stitch pattern that we want on the outside is actually on the inside. So we are going to turn our work inside out. So go ahead and just flip it inside out. The cool stitch pattern is actually on the wrong side of our work, so we want that facing out. We're going to keep on going, so we're going to chain one and we are going to turn our work. And now working in the back loops only of every stitch of this round, we are simply going to make a single crochet in every stitch around, including the same stitch that we joined in. So single crochet in every stitch around in the back loop only. And this creates a nice ribbing, if you can tell. So you're just going to continue to put a single crochet in the back loop only in every stitch around until you reach the stitch marker. So here I am at the stitch marker. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. And in that last stitch there, I'm gonna put a single crochet in the back loop only. And instead of joining with a slip stitch, I'm gonna show you how to join with an invisible slip stitch. So it's slightly different. Take your tail and move it to the back of your work. And then you're going to slide your hook out of your working loop. Find that first stitch and insert your hook from back to front and grab that working loop and put it on your hook. Now you're simply going to bring that loop to the back. And we're going to keep on going. So now we're going to chain one and working through both loops this time, we are going to make a single crochet in every stitch around. So just continue making a single crochet through both loops and each stitch around until you reach the end. So here I am at the end. We're going to do another invisible slip stitch. Again, move your yarn to the back. Remove your hook from your working loop. Put your hook from back to front in your very first stitch. Grab your working loop and snag it to the back of your work. Now we're going to chain one and working in the back loops only, we are simply going to make loose slip stitches. So that's these stitches here. We are going to slip stitch in the back loop only all the way around. You don't want to do this too tightly or it might be too small for your cup. So just continue repeating that all the way around till you reach the very first stitch. So here I am at the end. We're going to go ahead and cut our yarn. We are not going to slip stitch to join. This is called an invisible join. So now we're just going to pull our hook upwards until the tail comes all the way through our last stitch. And then you're going to grab a yarn needle and going through the first stitch that we made of this round, this is where we came out of. We're going to go under both of those loops of our very first stitch. And we're going to pull that tail through. And then going back to where the tail came out in our very last stitch, we're going to put our needle through the top there.
and then it just looks like another stitch when you're done. So because we didn't make a knot, you're gonna need to weave your tail very, very good in order to secure that strand. So go ahead and do that. And I usually hide that seam there with a tag just so it looks better. Now we're gonna add the bottom rounds. We will be working in the continuous round, so you're gonna need your stitch marker again. Now you can join anywhere in this bottom here. I'm going to go down from the tail there that I have from before, just so it's not too bulky. So you can join anywhere, but I'm gonna come down here. And I'm still using the six millimeter hook that I used for the body. So go ahead and slip stitch, but do not chain one. We are gonna be working in the continuous round. So you're gonna slip stitch in each stitch of that bottom round all the way around. And this is the remaining loop, so technically this would have been the front loop of our chain that we made at the very beginning. And I wanted to show you what I do whenever I get to that tail from the beginning foundation chain. So I'm just going to throw it to the back and I'm going to slip stitch into that chain as well. Just to help hide it. So you should have 38 stitches because we started with 38. So now we are going to continue working in the continuous round and we are going to be working through the back loop only of those slip stitches. So just starting with that very first slip stitch in the back loop only, you're going to make another round of slip stitches. But because we're working in the continuous round, we really need to mark that first stitch. Now just continue working loose slip stitches all the way around in the back loop only. So here I am at the end. I am going to take this hook out and we are going to switch to a four millimeter hook. We're still working in the continuous round, so we're going to continue to use the stitch marker. In the very first stitch, we are going to be making one single crochet through the back loop only. And this is going to be what we do in every stitch. So. We're going to continue to work in the back loop only, and don't forget to mark that first stitch. So just keep working in the back loops, making one single crochet in each stitch around. And you do kind of want to tighten up your stitches for this, because this is going to help hold this on your cup. So here we are back at the stitch marker and we are going to go down another hook size to a 3.75 millimeter hook. So we are going to work in the continuous round yet again. So remove your stitch marker and this time we are going to go through both loops. We're not going to go through just the back loop. So going through both loops, go ahead and make a slip stitch in each stitch around. And again, you're gonna wanna kind of tighten up these stitches because this is what will help hold the cozy on your cup. This yarn is super stretchy, so you don't have to worry about it too much, but you don't want it falling off. So just continue doing that all the way around till you reach the stitch marker. So here we are at the very end. We are pretty well done with our cup cozy. We're going to do another invisible join. So that's just cut your yarn. Do not slip stitch. 
and we're gonna just go ahead and pull this tail all the way through our last stitch. Grab your tapestry needle and thread it onto that tail. Find the very first stitch of the round and go underneath both loops from front to back. And then take that tail and go back in the stitch you came out of from top to bottom. And again, you're going to want to weave that tail in really, really good so that it doesn't come undone. And then once you've done that, you're pretty well finished. So go ahead and weave in your tails. And I wanted to remind you, don't forget to add the tag to hide that seam. It just looks a lot better. Go ahead and try it on your cup to see how it fits. And it fits perfect. Your Kindle Cup Cozy is complete. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.